What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. In this video today, I'm going to be showing you how to take your Amazon or eBay or Recon, whatever LED tail lights you've got, take them apart the correct way, not like my other video where we cut them apart. Uh, I'm going to show you how to take off this lens without cutting it and then how to paint the surround, how to paint the lens, how to paint the interior and get probably better than most professional LED uh, tail light builder shops. Uh, probably better results than most of them are going to do. This is 100% the correct way. This is the way that it should be done on all of them. Without any more talking, let's jump right into the video. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Justin Hawk Smith channel. Today's video is going to be a very, very important video that I get asked about all the time. We're going to be talking about opening up LED tail lights, uh, paint matching them, uh, how to reseal the tail lights after you've got them opened up. Uh, we're going to be talking about how to paint the trim, the surround um, around the edge. And we're going to be opening the tail lights up and color matching them and all of that without cutting them. Without cutting them. Without cutting them. Without cutting them. Okay, everybody, you know, you talk to some tail light people, they'll tell you that they have to be cut open. Okay, some do have to be cut open, I think. And, of course, it's going to be dependent on what brand of truck you have, what model of truck, all kinds of stuff. This is not going to cover every single truck out there. There are some tail lights that can only be opened by cutting them. Um, this video is for pretty much 1999 through... 2016 I want to say F250 actually I'm like 100% sure it's 99 through 2016 F250 F350 F450 any of them that have tail lights just like this and this also um, works for the 97 I think 97 to 03 10th uh, generation F150 as well uh, they, they both have the same tail lights so before we jump right into the video I want to go ahead and say uh, you're welcome for breaking like, I want to say five or six sets of these F-250 tail lights. Um, so well over a thousand dollars worth of tail lights that I've broke figuring out how to do this. And I do sell these tail lights uh, pre-painted, all of that. You don't have to do anything except PayPal me the money and then I build your tail lights and ship them to you. Uh, they do run $350 shipped if you would like a set color matched. Uh, for 99 through 16 F-250s like you're going to see done in this video. Uh, some people don't have the time, some people want to learn, some people want to do it even if mine turn out better than theirs, they done it themselves and that's what it's all about. It's all about building your truck the way you want to build it and using your own hands I believe uh, to build whatever you want. Um, and do the work yourself. I think that really makes a huge difference in the finished product and makes it feel even better whenever you see your truck uh, with those color match tail lights or color match headlights or color match tow mirrors. I have videos on the channel of color match tow mirrors, all kinds of stuff. But without further ado, we're going to go ahead and jump into this video and get started on this how to bake open, not cut open F250, F350 LED tail lights. Let's go. So all you got to do is hop on Amazon, order you a set of LED tail lights. You're going to get them. They're going to be sweet. You can get black, chrome, whatever you want to get. You just order you a set of tail lights for your truck. You get them in. So after you get your tail lights in, they're going to look like this. The link to these tail lights will be in the description below. Gently lay those down. Okay. So I want to go over the first step. So before you bake open the tail lights, there are a couple things that you have to do to them. Um, you want to take these plugs and stuff them in here so then you don't have to worry about them getting melted while they're in the oven. Okay, after you've got your plug-ins and stuff uh, pressed into the socket right here and out of the way, you want to take off the uh, little pieces of paper that are covering the holes just so they don't catch on fire in the oven. And you're gonna see right here, the way these are designed, now your tail lights may be different if you don't have these exact ones. There are a couple spots right here to prevent moisture from coming in. Um, these also hold the reflectors in. What it is is you're looking at the back side of the reflectors, the little clips. 
So there's some sealant or glue, whatever you want to call it. All I do is I take a pick and you literally just press in onto this glue stuff and you can just pop it out. You don't have to heat it up or anything. So you literally just press that in there. Okay. So before you bake them, you want to get every single one of those pieces out of that glue. Because if you don't, and I know this by experience, if you don't, it will get all over everything. It will ruin your lens, everything. So take all of that out, all of this glue off of these pieces right here, and then you are ready to heat this up to open it. After you get your tail light completely cleaned out, all of those little spots out, you got your wires tucked in here. You're going to preheat your oven to 250 degrees. Okay, this one's already preheated, so I'm going to put the tail light in here. Okay, so you just want to set your tail light in there and close it up. Now you want to go on here and set you a timer for 15 minutes at 250 degrees. So before we pull these tail lights out of the oven, you are going to want to put some gloves on. I use my trusty dirt bike gloves. They work, they get the job done, they dissipate the heat just fine. You can use uh, like some heat proof gloves. These are kind of thin, like they're just thin enough to where I can work in them. Um, and they reduce the heat quite a bit. So you want to put your pair of gloves on because these will be kind of hot. And then go ahead and open up your oven as soon as it beeps and it's done. We've got eight more minutes to go, which will be like five seconds in video form. So we're going to go ahead and open up the oven and pull these out as soon as this timer goes off. Okay, so the tail lights have like 20 seconds left. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn on the recording. And as soon as these things beep, you want to get them out and you want to start working right away. Uh, you don't want to waste any time, let them cool down, nothing like that. So, okay, there's the timer beeping. So you want to get your pick and your gloves on and go get your tail lights. I'll be right back. Okay, so where I like to start on these tail lights in particular is on the side, there's a little line right here. So you want to take your pick and just put it right in that line and just get it under there, okay? And you don't want to pry on the lens very hard because it is so hot that you can deform it. So what we want to do is we want to get our pick and you'll see the lens come up out of the sealant. So do you see this little clear line right there? That's where the sealant used to be over top of it. See, so right here, it's all black, right? Okay, watch this. Whenever I run this pick up through here, are you watching it turn silver? See, did you see that? Okay, so that is the lens separating out of the sealant. Now that doesn't mean that you can just pull it straight off as soon as it does that. But you just want to go around the whole lens and turn it the uh, the clear silver color and all that's doing is breaking your lens out of the sealant because this isn't a gluey substance, it's very hard. Whatever they use to seal up these tail lights is very hard. So you want to be super careful with the lens and just go all the way around the tail lights and work that loose. Okay, I'll show you another little angle right here so the pick is actually under it's under and through the lens right here so see you want to take it all the way under and put it through the lens and work it around like this with your thumb just like you're peeling an apple okay so run it around through here so run your lens around through here and pop it up see right around through here it's already popped up look at this 
these tail lights, that's why these tail lights are, they have a bad name because they're not sealed very well from the factory. So whenever you have a tail, this, from right here we can literally pull it off by hand. So these tail lights are not sealed, with, see look at this. Piece of cake whenever you know how to do it right. Okay, so that is one horrible thing about these tail lights is from the factory they are not sealed very good at all. So you take cheap tail lights that are not sealed good at all, they leak, they already don't have the best LEDs inside of them, let's just be real. Uh, they work, they're bright, but who knows how long they're gonna work, uh, you know, because it's just a cheaper tail light. Uh, but this, this way of doing it will work for the fancy tail lights and it will work for the cheap tail lights. That's why I'm making this video, okay? So you take cheap tail lights, they're bright, they work good, whatever. You buy them, you throw them in your truck, just how they come. They're not sealed very well, so they get moisture inside of them. When they get moisture inside of them, the LEDs go out, okay? It gives the tail light itself a bad name, even though the only reason the LEDs went out is because they got moisture inside of them. Okay, you take any tail light out there, unless it has waterproof LEDs inside of it, which I don't think any of them do, if they get moisture inside of them, they're gonna go out, okay? So when you're taking this cheaper tail light, and you're saving money there and then whenever you reseal it if you follow along with this video and you do a perfect job just like I'm going to show you how to then you're going to reseal it perfect there's not going to be any moisture getting inside of your tail light the LEDs aren't going to go out unless they just burn out that's always the case that can happen okay I've never had it happen I've ran these tail lights for well over a year I've sold multiple sets and never had any trouble out of them so anyway Enough of that, I just wanted to tell you uh, kind of why cheaper tail lights have a bad name uh, and have a bad reputation. So we've got our housing right here with no lens on it. You've got your lens right here, no glue, no nothing, brand new lens. Okay, you have a channel, you have a separate, you have a separate level, okay. I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, but there is a separate there's a little ridge, okay? That ridge is what creates your seal. If this little ridge, all the way, so you see this line, let's see here, this line right here. If this line doesn't get pressed down in to some sort of sealant, right there you can see it really good. So that ridge has to get pressed down into sealant and create that seal. So we're gonna go over right quick what we do after this. You're gonna have your top plug in right here. And then you're gonna have this plug in. This goes to your load resistor so it doesn't hyper flash. It has a built in load resistor. It comes in the box with the tail lights. Let me go ahead and show you. Okay, this is what the load resistor looks like. It's a little box. It's pl completely plug and play. Uh, it plugs into right here. You put red to red, black to black, plug it in. Super simple, then you just, this has double sided tape. You tape it to inside your bed somewhere, or whatever. Then these are plug and play and they don't hyper flash. Okay, so set that down. Now what you want to do is there's a grommet right here. You want to take that grommet and pull on it. Be super careful. Don't just rip it out of its socket. Okay, after you get that grommet pulled out, just like this, you want to pull up on it just a little bit and slide it up. Slide the wires through it until you have the grommet up on the wires like this. Okay, we want to clip it below the grommet. If you clip it above the grommet, then you're going to have your reconnection where you solder and put some heat shrink on it. You're going to have that on the external part of the lens and it's not going to look good. So you want to go ahead and clip this right here, just with scissors, wire cutters, whatever you got, go ahead and clip this off. Clip it off. Well, you all didn't even just now see that. Okay, so you want to clip this off right here. Just like that. You've got two wires sticking up. Here's your grommet and all that. So clip this piece off, set it to the side. Okay, now you want to take your Phillips head screwdriver and there is a screw right here, a screw right here, and right here. There are three screws. You want to take those three screws out and then this whole center piece right here, do you see this line? This whole center piece is gonna come out after you remove these three Phillips head screws. Okay, so after we've got the three Phillips head screws, you can go ahead and pull out on this right here. Okay, then you've got this center piece. Okay, here's your lens. You have two options here. 
If you're super, super careful, like I am, and you do very, very light, light coats, you can leave these reflectors in here and end up not having a gap of like filled in paint right through here. If you put the paint and clear on too thick, it's going to fill this in and you're not gonna have clean, crisp uh, lines on your reflectors. Um, or you can take these out and leave them red. You can take them out and paint them a different color. You can do whatever you want. Okay, also, once you're at this point, um, you want to clean out all of your old sealant. Okay, this sealant is not glue. You cannot just like pull on it. Okay, I recommend you take a razor blade and be super, 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 super careful. And you take your razor blade and point it in the direction of the corner and slice it. You have to actually cut this stuff out of here. Okay, so you want to get all of the old sealant out of there using your pick. I use a sharp, sharp pocket knife and I use a flathead screwdriver in some cases uh, that I put on the bench grinder and filed it down to where it's super, super sharp. You want to clean out all of your excess and then this piece is done you're ready to start prepping it and painting it. So all you do is take out all of these Phillips head screws and this motherboard will completely come out and then this is just a plastic shell that you just have to prep and paint. Figured I would go ahead and show you all a, a little shot of how I get out the uh, sealant that it's put together with from the factory. So uh, please ignore my dog in the background. He will not be quiet for some reason. Um, anyway, so I, t I use a pocket knife. Just get a super, super sharp pocket knife. And I don't know if you can see, but so right here is pretty much what you're working with as far as the sealant goes. It's stretchy. It's not gooey, like even whenever you heat it up. So I literally take it and I'll go down in here and you literally just pry all of this old glue out. And you just want to work with it. It's a little bit time consuming, uh, but in the end it's worth it. Your main channels that you want to watch for is right in here where the lens will actually seat down in there and then this whole big long channel in here. You wanna double check that and make sure that you get all of the glue out. Um, this channel, as you can see, I've already got it. So you just wanna get it just completely clean. You can run your fingernail down through there and uh, scrape it off with the plastics. So as far as prep goes, once you've got all of the glue out, uh, we've got this piece and the tail light, of course. You wanna just take a red scotch bright pad and scuff up everything. The reverse light bucket is one of the most important things because it's chrome. Uh, and don't forget right here, I don't know if you can see that, but that little, where you can see all those little spikes, you wanna make sure to get through there and make sure that you get full coverage with your paint through there and where you can see the spikes right here because all of that is visible once it's back together. So this is after they have been prepped with the red scotch bright pad as you can see they're just a very very dull black get in those spots right there top and bottom um, as you can see all of the reflectors are dull in here inside of the chrome is all dull and everything has been scuffed on these i do this edge right here and then inside of each one of these divots, and then I just go a little bit heavy on the uh, adhesion promoter. Uh, and I've had great results with that, and everything has held up just fine. Uh, mainly because, as you all know, inside of here is never going to be exposed to the elements. So we're kind of over prepping it. Uh, we don't want to under prep it because you don't want it to be flaking off inside of your lens. Um, but now we will use the adhesion promoter. And I've got an old can of it laying right here. This stuff works great. Uh, just for doing little tail lights and stuff like this. It's just the Duplicolor plastic adhesion promoter and that is strictly for plastic. Just any primer will work just fine. And then as far as cleaning these before you spray them with the adhesion promoter and the primer and base and all that, 
I just use some acetone um, and a paper towel or a microfiber. Either one will work. Uh, the paper towel is going to leave some hairs and stuff. So you want to go over that um, with a tack cloth to get all of the hairs and stuff off of it or fibers from the paper towel or the microfiber. Both of them are going to leave some fibers. I know you probably can't see it on camera, but there are fibers all over the tail lights right now. Uh, from the acetone and uh, microfiber or paper towel, either one that you use, there will be fibers on it. So you want to make sure to hit it with that tack cloth and then on to the adhesion promoter. So as soon as I get the adhesion promoter sprayed, I'll kind of show you what that looks like and then we'll go over it with the primer. Okay, so all of the adhesion promoter has been sprayed. It's going to make everything pretty much just look matte colored, no gloss, no nothing. It's just going to look matte. So once you get one good full coat on everything, you are ready for the primer. Please don't pay attention to my dog. I'm so sorry that he's in the background barking. Diesel, it's okay. It's okay, bro. So go ahead and shoot everything with the primer. And uh, I'll show you that. And then we will go on to the base coat. Okay, guys, so we got these primered. Um... Once you get the primer on here, you want to let this dry for at least an hour or two. Of course, whenever you're painting anything, you want to make sure that there's no bare spots, but it's especially hard to do on these parts right here because they're so tedious and uh, all these little grooves and stuff. But we got the primer on there, full coverage. So let's wait an hour or two, and then we are going to tack cloth and spray the base coat down. And I will see you as soon as we get the base coat sprayed down. Okay, so we have our base coat laid down and full coverage on that. Uh, it's already pretty glossy, but we've got our clear coat mixed up right here. So we're going to go ahead and start shooting the 2K clear coat. First, you just want to tack it down. Um, this clear coat that I'm using is mixed four to one, so it's four parts clear, one part hardener, and it's a hardening uh, automotive clear coat. So we're going to go ahead and pour that into our gun and shoot these and spray them with the clear coat and then once they dry I'll show them to you and then we just have to do the outline on the lens and then these will be done okay guys so we just now got the clear coat laid down super super glossy uh, if you know how to shoot that hardening clear coat you don't have to wet sand and buff or anything so we'll try to get a little sun shot right here for you. So super, super glossy. Turned out awesome as always. Uh, we're also shooting a set of Silverado tails right here. They were white. They turned out super awesome as well. Super glossy. Um, but now we're going to let this clear coat harden. It just now came out of the oven. So we're just letting it air dry for a little bit. Just set it back here on the back of the bed. And once this hardens, then we will put everything back together and use the retro rubber as I'll show you and put that around there, put the lens on, and then we have to uh, paint a line on the exterior of the lens. But if you all have watched this far in the video, just want to say thanks for watching. And we just now hit 1500 subscribers. Uh, I think we're at like 1550 already. Uh, so I really, really appreciate each and every one of you and hope this video helps you all out and gets you all out here doing truck stuff and saving money and still doing it the right professional way. Um, and if y'all don't feel like doing this, a little self-promotion here, I do this on the side. Um, so if you have an F-250 or any other truck and you want some color match tail lights for it, you can hit me up. I have very, very competitive prices and I will not be beat for the quality of work that I do. Um, cheaper than other people, but there are still people cheaper than me, but they won't give you results like this. Anyway, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to put the lens back on, and then we will paint the uh, trim surround, and then we'll throw them in the truck. Uh, these are actually customers, so we won't be able to throw them into the truck, uh, but I'll show them to you finished and everything, and uh, hopefully uh, I can get them shipped out by the time I edit this video and I'll have him send me a picture of what they look like in the truck um, just to show you all that the color's perfect and all that. Uh, but anyway, let's get into putting these things back together. 
Okay guys, so next up I'll be showing you how to put the sealant on here and put the lens back on the tail light. Um, but you want to take your retro rubber. I get a piece that is the length from here to here of this thickness, like just the thickness that it already is. So I tear off a piece that's that long and then I heat it up with my heat gun. Just hold it up right here in front of you. Heat it up with a heat gun and stretch it. Um, and just make it the exact width of this and that piece from here to here when stretched correctly the exact width of the channel will actually stretch all the way around and reconnect right here okay so once you get that in here like I've got it you want to just take your thumb and press it down into the channel just go all the way around it and just flatten it out and get it really really nice and flat in there and just make sure that it fills up the complete channel. Our next step is going to be taking the heat gun and what we're going to do is just go very slowly all the way around it at about this rate of speed. So it should take you about six or seven seconds to do this straight line. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So just keep that rate of speed all the way around. It should take you about 20 to 25 seconds to go all the way around the whole tail light. And you just want to go around the whole tail light four or five times with it on high and keep about three to four inches away from the tail light. Don't get it too hot or you will boil the paint. Once you heat this stuff up, it gets very, very sticky. So if you can press on it and it doesn't come up on your finger, it's not hot enough. You're literally getting this stuff like liquid in the channel of the tail light, and then you're gonna put your lens on there, and whenever you press your lens down on there, just like it was from the factory, it should be flush all the way up against this. And I just wanted to go ahead and throw in right quick, make sure that your lens is perfectly clean. Like whenever you take this off, even if you had to put it in a Rubbermaid container box, I do that sometimes. No dust, lint, hairs, anything. There will be more stuff on that lens if you leave it out for a day or two than you would ever think that there would be. So make sure that you leave this in a Rubbermaid container or in a closet somewhere or in an extra bedroom somewhere that you don't use and make sure that you lay it face down like this so then all the debris that would land on it would just be on the outside instead of the inside because if you get this dirty or if you get anything on here you cannot wipe it off it will scratch it uh, you, you can clean it sometimes but it's still not gonna look as good if you just do not touch it so this lens is brand new there's not a single speck or anything on here on the inside which is the most important the outside doesn't really matter you can clean that up and that's gonna be getting sanded anyway but the inside of this lens do not touch it with your fingers do not touch it with gloves on don't touch it with anything but make sure that all of the lint and hairs are off of that get this liquefied around through here and then just press it on the sealant is completely compressed all the way up against this all the way around and i just want to give you all a couple pointers whenever you're pressing that on do not push right here in the center um, because it does get pretty close to the reflector and you can actually press in on this and it will compress the paint and it can cause a little mark. So now we're going to go ahead and start painting. So I'm going to go over the steps that you need to do to the lens to prep it for the paint. So you can do the 2000 grit if that's all that you have, but the 1500 grit will definitely be a little bit better. So I'm going to go ahead and get both of these sanded. Sorry for my strap on my camera. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get both of these sanded and masked off and then I'll show you what it looks like. But I just wanted to go ahead and show you the difference uh, between sanded and not sanded. And also whenever you sand this you want to keep your strokes straight up and down. Uh, that's what she said. Okay so next you want to take uh, your 3M, uh, I think it's quarter inch maybe, quarter inch masking tape. Uh, anything that will bend and form, I've used electrical tape for this before so electrical tape works just as good if not better I think I actually like the electrical tape more than this stuff because this stuff bonds on here really really good and it's almost hard to get off like whenever you're rushing to take it off right after you spray so if you have any electrical tape around uh, preferably new electrical tape so then it's not like all broken down and it will leave residue everywhere 
uh, but brand new roll of electrical tape works wonders. It works really, really good. So pretty much anywhere that there's glue uh, will be painted uh, right up through here. You want to be able to see in between the glue and your line um, because all of this will be painted, you know, once we pull off the masking tape, uh, it'll be painted the same color as the truck. Okay, so we have both of these masked off. Uh, we're going to come in with the adhesion promoter first. Okay, so I just now sprayed the adhesion promoter. It's going to turn like a matte clear color. All the scratches are going to disappear. Uh, you just want to do one full coverage coat of the adhesion promoter. Let this flash for about 8 to 10 minutes, just like I said. Then come in here. Sorry for the wind noise. Come in here, do one pretty much 80% coverage with primer, and then do like a 50 50 coverage with the base coat so after your adhesion promoter you're going to spray your primer so we're going to let this primer just flash you don't want to put it on thick as you can see it's literally just a mist because you want that edge on that masking tape to always show we're trying to run it as thin as possible right here so we're going to let this primer dry for about five minutes after five minutes goes by this misted coat of primer will be dry and then we can go on with the base coat. So this one is primer. This one is 50-50 coverage of the base coat. Just wanted to go ahead and show you that. So I'm going to go ahead and put another full wet coat on this. And then this one's done. Peel off the masking tape and then we're ready for clear coat. So this is wet right now. Super, super glossy. Uh, you want to go ahead and peel this off. Just wanted to show you a little clip of me peeling it off. So this is what it's going to look like after you get the masking tape peeled off. As you can see, all of that ugly glue is gone and the surround is painted. And this is going to look even better after we get it clear coated. But I just wanted to show you the difference uh, and what it looks like after you get it painted on the outside and the masking tape peeled off main thing is just make sure that it's wet make sure that you've got a steady hand and you're super super careful so I'm gonna go ahead and knock this one out and then we'll prep both of them and spray some clear alright guys so we just now got the lens clear coated I mean you really can't tell I put this as a side-by-side -side comparison but whenever you get full glass with the clear on the lens you literally can't tell so this is what it used to look like right there and then this is probably honestly not hardened yet so I'm not gonna touch the outside of it but it looks so good and that flake that flake is just popping so again if anybody wonders why you color match tail lights right here is why because look at that before and after so you literally go from this to this for under three hundred dollars easily uh oh my friend colby's calling me my boy colby yeah. what's up bro what's popping dude nothing just filming a little youtube video oh am i being featured in it well, you may be featured now. What up? Everybody go follow Colby, bro. His username is going to be popping up right here. He's got a clean F250 Platinum. Or is it 350? It's 250. 250. He's, he hasn't promoted up to 350 yet. <laughs> no, but for real, go follow Colby. I'll call you after I film this scene. All right, bro. Peace. So you literally, you can't really tell that it's clear coated as long as you do the clear coat good enough. Um, but yeah, this is fully clear coated on here and pretty much finished up. So I'm going to, uh, you literally, you just do the black and the red wire on the back side right here um, that we cut earlier on in the video. You just splice those back together and solder them and heat shrink them, shove them back in there, put the grommet back on. And then you want to take some of the retro rubber and plug these three Phillips holes. And don't forget to plug your reflectors right here as well. Put some silicone 
or the retro rubber that I'll show. Everything will be linked down in the description below as always. But anyway, so thank you all for watching the video. Go follow Colby. Go follow me on Instagram. Scott's right here behind me, his truck. Go follow Scott. I'll pop it up right here. Anyway, though, thanks for watching the video. Sorry it was kind of long, but now you all should have zero questions. Super in-depth. How to build color match taillights. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.